Hello class, this is Ms. Riggins here to bring you another video on the topic of transformations, which is what Unit 10 is all about. Today we're going to be talking about another transformation called rotations. And in this case, um, a rotation basically changes the position of a shape. Um, most people confuse it with the translation, but it's actually not exactly a translation. Um, what it does have in common with um, a translation is that rotation is also an isometry. When I rotate a figure, I'm not going to change the figure's size or shape. I'm just going to change its location. So it still is going to be congruent to its original shape, which makes an isometry or you're used to it calling it a congruence transformation. But this transformation does require more than just the figure or point to be rotated. It requires three things. To rotate a figure or a point, which most people do is rotate the, a point on the figure, but regardless, to perform any rotation you need three things. You need a point that you're going to rotate the entire point or figure about. You're going to also need a direction of rotation and there are actually two directions that we use. The most common one or standard direction is called the counterclockwise. And the notation is CCW, which means it's going the opposite direction of a clock. And that is the most popular and normal direction. In fact, it's so popular that people don't even say the direction because if they tell you they're going to do a rotation of 50 degrees and they don't tell you which direction you can just automatically assume it's going to be counterclockwise but if they do tell you it's going to be clockwise then that means you're going to have to go another direction and this direction around the clock is called clockwise but you only go that direction when they say it normally the most common direction is counterclockwise and they won't even say it's counterclockwise so you need a point of rotation, you need a direction to rotate it about, and you need an angle that you want to rotate the point about. So it's up to you, but normally people use rotation angles of um, between 0 and 180 degrees. So if it's um, a rotation angle between 0 and 180 degrees, to figure out how you want to rotate it, you need to first and foremost take a line segment that's the distance between the point you want to rotate and I'm going to pick the yellow point and the point of rotation and I want to make an angle that is either 180 degrees or less between that rotation point and the original point so this is a zero degree rotation this is like a 90 degree rotation like a hundred and eighty degree rotation. You never you you are gonna see people say, oh, that's gonna be two hundred and seventy degrees and vice versa. But two hundred and seventy degrees looks exact counterclockwise looks exactly like uh, ninety degrees clockwise. So normally we will say um, between zero and hundred and eighty degrees, but you will see it above that as well. So let's say I want to use this angle. I don't know, I just say I want to use this angle. And just to double check, I'm going to um, make a bigger angle so you can see what we're talking about. Oh, that was very close. So this is the angle that we're going to use. And if you took broke, broke out a protractor, it'd probably be a little bit over 90 degrees, like a 100 degree angle. Well, I want to rotate my figure so that my yellow point image is on the other um, ray of this angle because right now the yellow point is on this ray of the angle and I want it to be on this ray of the angle to complete my rotation but it all depends on the actual length so I want to make sure that the length is the same so what I'm going to do I'm going to make sure that this is the same length and yes it is so in order to figure out where the new yellow point needs to go, I need to make sure the new yellow point is the same distance from the rotation point. Oops, sorry, didn't mean to move that. So I'm going to fix this to make sure I know exactly where it's the same distance. 
okay so right here is where I'm going oops <laughs> is where I'm going to need to put my new yellow point so I go over here take my point and here's my image and here's my yellow point and I put it there so now the yellow point has been rotated this many degrees about the point of origin but since I'm rotating a figure, I have to make sure that all the figures are the same angle of rotation about the rotation point. So that means, let's see with the red. So let me figure out. So here is the same 100 degree rotation, but I need to make sure that this red point is on this ray since the pre-image red point is on this ray. So I need to move this figure so that it appears on the line while making sure that it doesn't go too far. Oops. Okay. And eventually I'll get the it's been a long day. All right. Okay. And what you'll see is the same situation will occur if I take an angle from the rotation point and another point, in this case the uh, purple point, and as you can see here, the purple point is close to being on the angle ray, and then the other purple point is close to being on the angle ray. So all this said that this point, this figure is rotated the same amount of degrees around. Now, in your notes, you're going to see some, um, the notes that I posted, you're going to see some coordinate notations to represent some common rotations. So, let's take a look at that. Okay, we're back. And on page 103 of the notes that are to go on to, into your interactive math notebook, we have some definitions, um, some vocabulary words, and we also have instructions on how to rotate a point about an angle. But on page 237 in your note-taking guide, we have some coordinate rules to rotate a point counterclockwise about the origin. So, let's take a look. Now, if I want to rotate a point AB, and for this case, AB is in the first quadrant, and I want to rotate it counterclockwise about, instead of just a general point of rotation, we're going to use the origin, then I can predict what the actual new coordinates or the image coordinates are going to be. So if I start with AB, my original point, and I rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise, the new position for AB is actually the opposite of B is the X coordinate and the A, um, Y coordinate is A. If I want to take this same point and rotate it about the origin 180 degrees, so if it was in the first quadrant and ended up in the third quadrant, then that means my new coordinates for the new image point are all going to be the opposite sign, so opposite of A and opposite B. And last, if I want to take it around, want to rotate it around 270 degrees. So let's say first quadrant to the fourth quadrant. It actually looks like it's going to be simply the same as a coordinate notation for reflection across the x axis. Oops, that's wrong. This should be negative a. Oops, and this should, should be b. So basically, this is the same thing as reflecting this side across the x axis. So that was a typo in uh, my notes, but hopefully you'll correct it in your notes. So the new correction, basically a 270 degree counterclockwise rotation, is the same as a reflection of the point across the x-axis. Now what if they don't tell you it's counterclockwise, what if they tell you it is clockwise? Well, let's take a look. If I'm going to start here, and go to this point, even though it was a 270 degree counterclockwise, guess what type of angle is produced here? A 90 degree angle. So this is the same thing as a 90 degree angle degree clockwise. 
And if I want to go 180 degrees clockwise, well, of course, I end up at the same point when it was 180 degrees counterclockwise. So this is, oops, sorry, those are right, right, clockwise. And if I want to go clockwise all the way over 270 degrees, I end up over here where it's a rotation of 90 degrees counterclockwise. So that is um, how you do rotations.